Welcome back to The Delineation. I believe this is episode number 25. It has been a very long time since I've done a podcast uh, in The Delineation. I apologize for those that are or have been wanting one for a long time, but it's not something that I have content for all the time. And so I like having it as like a special you know, thing to talk about certain topics. But let's cut to the chase. What is this episode about? Long story short, there's always new articles regarding astrology and the belief in astrology and them disproving it or debunking it. And it's really annoying because none of them are good. Um, A lot of them have a bias. A lot of them, of course, have an agenda, which is just to prove astrology wrong. But the other day I was on Instagram and I saw a video from this guy, and I'm going to play the video here in just a moment. Uh, what's his name? Joe Nucci, Joe Nucci Therapy. Uh, I've seen a few of his videos on Instagram. I really, really like this guy. And because he, he always just talks about like the weaponization of therapy terms. Like he's like, you're not traumatized. Stop calling everyone a narcissist and everything like that. But he posted a video about a study that showed or that claimed to showed that uh, the more, essentially, if you are more of a narcissist, you have more of a um, chance of believing in astrology. And just to give you know him some room here, he stated, it's like, okay, just because you believe in astrology doesn't mean like you're a narcissist. But this study essentially claims that, oh, if you are, like if you test high for narcissism, you have a higher chance of believing in astrology. And I watched the video, I thought it was funny um, because I do believe a lot of you are a little narcissistic. Um, And I say that with love, but let's be honest. The thing is, though, this study in the scientific world, what, what the scientists love to do is they love to get some sort of data that confirms their bias, which, for example, you know, you can have one study that says, you know, there's adverse effects with one thing. And every other scientist wants like multiple studies claim the same thing. But when something about astrology comes out, they just go, oh, this is the end all be all. This means, you know, you know, if you're a narcissist, you're going to believe in astrology. So a lot of, you know, astrologers are narcissists. And today I want to go over that study and the problems with that study. Uh, As I looked it over, there is a ton of problems with it. And the reason I want to do this is because for one If you know anybody in the field of science that does studies, I would super appreciate sharing them with this because, or sharing this with them, because I would love more well-rounded studies about astrology, because I think if they did the studies correctly, they would actually find some really interesting topics. They would actually find some really interesting evidence rather than just creating a random study that doesn't really show anything. And that's what I think the study does too. And I've talked to a few people. A lot of people have said that the study is really bunk. But there's not a lot of astrologers like going after these kind of studies. And so I try to do my best to like keep on the um, the uh, lookout for this kind of stuff. And I haven't been open or talking about it. But this one just really kind of uh, rubbed me the wrong way. So let's talk about it. Let's first start talking about the video that I watched. And then we're going to go over the study. We're going to go over a few of the sources that the study cited, which are also kind of bullshit in my opinion. And uh, as I go through the study, I'm going to tell you everything that's wrong with the study. And I will be sending this video to the person who authored this study. I hope that they watch it. And I hope that, and again, if there's anybody that wants to do a study uh, on astrology, please hit me up. I am more than willing to help out in any way I can to make sure that if there's a study on astrology, that it is somewhat done correctly and that at least the astrology part of it would make sense. So let's go ahead and show the video that I was talking about. Like I said, this guy's name is Joe Nucci Therapy. I can't remember his name. I really like this guy. So I, I'm, I'm saying this with, um, you know, with, with love, essentially. Let me do this real quick. I need to get. There we go. All right. So let's watch this. Let me double check that the audio is working here. All right. Let's see. Oh, it would probably help if the volume was on. 
friendships are in jeopardy for posting this, but we have to talk about it. We have to talk about the study that came out that found that narcissism was the biggest predictor of believing in astrology. So the title of this paper is very humorous and it's titled, Even the Stars Think I'm Superior. And if you take the time to go read it, you'll find that the study looked at the big five personality traits, the dark triad traits and intelligence. And it concluded that out of all personality traits, narcissism was the strongest predictor of believing in astrology. Why? Well, it's preliminary, but the authors hypothesized that maybe it's because a lot of writings about astrological signs are typically positive. Now, this doesn't mean that everyone who believes in astrology is a narcissist, and this doesn't mean that all narcissists are going to believe in astrology. But given that astrology is having a really big moment right now, I wanted to share. And since I'm single, I'm going to put my complete chart right here. Feel free to screenshot and share to your friends. <laughs> I thought that last part was also really funny. Um, and I think he has a point. And like he said, this is what the study says, is that uh, they think it's because a lot of astrology is positive. If you're on my channel and you're on my show, you understand that that's not always the case. Uh, I think, and this is kind of my big, you know, gripe with most modern astrology is that it is all positive. It is, oh, you're perfect the way that you are. Nothing could ever go wrong. If everyone is wrong, it's, the, it's because they're a narcissist. It's because they're toxic. Um, but I left a comment, and the comment really is exactly how I feel, but it says, haha, I would totally believe consumers of astrology are totally narcissistic. And like on a base level, I still like believe that. Um, I, I think it's too easy. And when I say consumers of astrology, I'm talking about – not you guys. You guys are looking at charts. You guys are doing zodiacal releasing and time lord shit. You guys are above and beyond that. But I think the average quote unquote consumer that reads a sun sign horoscope and only knows their sun sign horoscope, maybe knows their moon sign, um, could totally be given a narcissistic you know, title. And I don't believe that it's like, oh, just someone is quote unquote narcissistic. Uh, I told you guys before, I listened to uh, Wes Watson a lot. And Wes Watson, he, he actually had a video the other day about narcissism. And it's like, you can have narcissistic moments. Like, that doesn't necessarily make you like a narcissist. And so, and again, you guys kind of know my opinion about a lot of modern psychological terms and how I don't really think that they help a lot. But you get my point here. I said, given they love to use that term against anyone, that's the other thing. If you're someone that calls everyone a narcissist, you're more than likely one. I said, but... Positive astrology is an inherently new thing. We're talking the past 100 to 300 years. Ancient astrology, which is the foundation of modern astrology, is actually insanely negative. Any ancient astrology book from 1000 BC to even like 1500 AD is pretty morbid. Would love to chat about this if you're interested because I love your takes uh, on mental health. I meant to say on. I'm a professional astrologer and unfortunately the space is ran by the type of mental health tactics you are question, you, you are question openly. Whoops, that's a typo. Thanks for the video. And so... um. Yeah, I, I, this is kind of like one of my, this is why I like this guy because he has videos about like, oh, you know, um, like stop calling everyone a narcissist. narcissist. You don't have trauma. Um, you know, not everything is toxic. And I think that there's a big group of people in the astrology space that subscribe to those modern psychological terms that don't help anything. They don't actually, all they do is just it, like, the. I, I see a meme all the time that's like, when men start using therapy language um, and weaponizing it against people. And I think the example was the Jonah Hill thing, which I thought was so funny because women totally love to just like take whatever the therapist says or whatever online therapy says and weaponize it against people. But then when men do therapy and then they get those terms, now they're the bad people for weaponizing it. Totally ridiculous, right? But let's go ahead and look at this study. So the study he links to is called... Uh, even the stars say that I am superior, uh, personal intelligence and belief in astrology. So we're going to go through this whole thing, okay? Because there's a lot of problems with it. There's a lot of assumptions with it. So abstract, belief in astrology is on the rise. This is correct. Although the reasons behind this are unclear. Are they? We tested whether individual, uh, individual personality traits could predict such epistemically unfounded beliefs. This... Uh, I can't stand this term, epistemically unfounded beliefs. There's no research on this stuff. So to sit here and say there's no, this is uh, you know epistemically unfounded 
no one's done like there's no study on like annual perfections, for example, right? Like what people don't understand is astrology looked a very specific way from like the 60s to the 90s. Then you get things like Project Hindsight where we're translating ancient texts. And now we have all of these new tools available to astrologers. And now we're doing crazy shit. Like we're not just saying, oh, you know, you're a Scorpio. So you're deep and mysterious. It's like, you know, we're being like, hey, you're this event is going to happen on this day and it's going to come from this area of your life. So this idea of uh, epistemically unfounded beliefs, it's like, well, you've never looked into it. So I don't like that word. Data was collected for 264 participants through an anonymous online survey shared on social media. That is a, an important seed that gets planted that will come up in just a second. So an anonymous online survey shared on social media. Okay. The survey consisted of four instruments, belief in astrology, we're going to talk about what that stands for. The big five personality traits, uh, narcissism, and intelligence. Data analysis was done with multiple linear regression. I'm too dumb to know what that means. I know that there's a link, but we're not going to click it. Narcissism was surprisingly the strongest predictor, and intelligence showed a negative relationship with belief in astrology. I think that's funny. Uh, why I think that's funny is, again, um, well, I'll go back over that in a minute, why I think that. Overall, our novel results our novel results suggest that something as innocent as astrology could both attract and possibly reinforce individual differences. Yeah, I think I mean that's true. Why wouldn't that be true? Something as astrology um, could both attract and possibly reinforce individual differences. People are different. That's the amazing thing about like astrology is it's going to show you how different you are from other people. And this is why I'm a big believer about like individuality, like your astrology is going to show like your exact individual life and, and everything about it. You're not just, you're, you know, while they would rather categorize, categorize people into five personality traits, it's like, okay, well, you know, people say like, well, you know, how could you just be one Zodiac sign? You know, you're not just going to be 12 Zodiac signs. It's like, well, you're kind of all of them. And then you also have like the planets and then you have like the aspects. So when you get to like the number and you multiply, it's actually like a lot, but anyway, I love this. Keywords, belief in astrology, pseudoscience, big five, narcissism, intelligence. I love the pseudoscience tag right here, but okay. Introduction. Astrology is increasing in popularity. Pew Research Center 2018. I love that they had to cite a source for that. Despite the lack of scientific support, this blew my mind how they cited a source to say, despite the lack of scientific support, and we have a source on that. Well, I clicked on that source. Let's read it. What makes people think astrology is scientific? So this says get full access to the article. I'm not paying $40 for 24-hour access to this article. Um, I'm, I, I just don't understand why that, that's there. But anyway, this gives us enough to work with here. Abstract. And I would like to actually read this fully at some point. And like, let me just say I've not read this full article. But just reading the abstract and then these bullet points at the bottom. Let's see the problems with this. Citizens in both North America and Europe are apt to read uh, horoscope columns in newspapers and magazines. While some people read these casually and purely for entertainment, some believe that astrology has scientific status and can provide real insight into events and personality. <laughs> Here's the first wrong assumption. Horoscope columns. Horoscope columns. This is not talking about birth charts. This is not talking about timing techniques. This is not talking about history. This is your basic bitch horoscope column. Uh, using data from a European survey, this article explores some of the reasons why some people think that astrology is scientific and how astrology is viewed in relation to other knowledge producing practices. As if, I love that they say that um, in relation to other knowledge producing practices. Three hypotheses in particular are tested. The first is that some Europeans lack necessary scientific literacy to distinguish science, science from pseudoscience. That I would agree with the issue is i i get so sick of people calling astrology a pseudoscience like if you go over the scientific method and like the basics of the scientific method it's like hypotheses you you test the hypotheses and I, I, i'm totally botching this i know but then other people have to replicate the same thing. That's all of astrology. By the way, there's a 5,000 year written history on other astrologers using other techniques others astrologers have done in multiple parts of the world via Latin, via Greek, via Arabic, via English. 
I, I don't understand how that doesn't qualify as a science, especially if things like political science could be a science, especially something like even psychology can be a science. So that is the first thing that bothers me. But I would also pretty much agree people don't necessarily always have the best, you know, uh, distinguishing skills between science and pseudoscience. But my argument is astrology isn't a pseudoscience and there's not one person in the science world that has a, a capacity of thought that allows them to see outside of their paradigm that astrology isn't real. Astrology, is, they've never once thought anything else is possible besides that. The second is that people are confused about what astrology actually is. Yes, that is the big bingo. And where I'm going to bring that up again in the other study. So again, because this is the this is the source for why astrology isn't scientific. I do believe a lot of people are confused with what astrology is, especially the people that just read horoscope columns. They're not doing the birth charts. They're not doing the timing techniques. They're not doing all of the things that that again, for example, like ancient astrologers weren't just reading your sun sign. They were calculating your whole birth chart. They were doing very advanced techniques with very advanced mathematics for that time. So I would agree that people are confused about what astrology actually is. Because again, it's not just like personality stuff. A lot of it is fatalistic. A lot of it is predict, uh, predictive. Anyway, the third is derived from Adorno's work on authoritarianism and the occult and postulates that those who adhere to authoritarian values are more likely to believe in astrological claims. Support is found for all three of these hypotheses. This was interesting to me. And I don't, I don't want to say I don't have an opinion on it. I don't disagree with that. And I think that is, the, my problem with that is the occult. Because again, what astrology always gets thrown in with the occult. And in my opinion, it's something completely separate from the occult. Um, and if you really want to get into it, it is the reason for occult thought, but that's a whole different conversation. But um, I don't necessarily know if I disagree with this. Um, only given my experience of the last few years and how astrologers reacted to, you know, the authoritarian ways of which every world government acted, as well as there is a, and I think this is more of a millennial thing, and they bring this up in the other study, um, everyone's uh, proclivity to communism. And I think that's just much more of a millennial thing because millennials think, you know, capitalism is the worst thing in the world, you know, ignore the 10 million deaths and the starvation. Um, but I don't necessarily disagree with that. So let's read these points real quick. Um, again, I'm not paying for this full article. I probably should read it, but you know, I, I just think the idea of saying like, oh, here's our study showing that science, uh, that astrology isn't real science. I don't have to read it to tell you that they did not actually do anything justice here. Um, one, a sensitive analysis showed that uh, a more detailed breakdown of religious denomination had no impact on the coefficients of other variables in the model. I thought that was interesting. Um, I would kind of expect that to maybe make a difference, but I thought that was interesting. What this is essentially saying is that like, it doesn't matter what your religion is, it's not really going to change your opinion on like astrology stuff. A five-point lurked Likert type scale is not strictly a continuous variable and therefore ordinary least squares may not be appropriate. To assess the sensitivity of the result to this, I also ran the analysis with a random effect of ordered logit model, which is Rabe, Hasketh, Scrondel, and, and Pickles, 2002. The result of this alternative uh, parameterization of the model shows no differences in the sign or statistical significance of any coefficient except for belief in God, which becomes marginally non-significant. Okay. Three, this could be viewed as evidence for semantic confusion. Although, as an anonymous referee pointed out, it may also be that astrology conforms on the surface to a naive view of what science is, and it is this, rather than confusion with astronomy, that leads to its tendency to be evaluated more scientific. This, I thought, was interesting. Um, I thought this was kind of a, a shot below the belt. Astrology conforms on the surface to a naive view of what science is. What science is, what science is. I don't think people need to, for example, over the past three years, if you made a claim about a certain health parameter, people were like, oh, cite your sources. What are your sources for that? As if human beings don't like have the comprehension of knowledge without being able to share the exact details of why that is. I don't think you need to completely break down what astrology is to people and know ex all of the history, know all of the specifics about it to be able to say like, yeah, it's a science. However, 
I would also agree that it's like I, the way I look at this is there's people that are pretty much dipping their toe into astrology, reading sun sign horoscopes saying, yeah, it probably is a science. And um, I do appreciate that they said rather than confusion with astronomy, because people always go like, because people aren't confused with it. Um, like most people, even that read their sun sign horoscope, they understand it's completely different to astrology. But they just make this assumption, and I, get, I know it's probably from this is probably from the study. So they have some, you know, bullshit, you know, marker to say that, oh yeah, it's, you know, people think it's actually more scientific. It's just I would probably argue that they're thinking that it's uh, more scientific without any understanding of like why that is, but they just know that that is probably true, and they're just going to write it off. But anyway, so this is the, um, this was the uh, site source cited for despite the lack of scientific support, which I thought was really funny because again, there is not one good study out there that's going to do astrology and well. So let's keep reading this introduction. So again, we're back to uh, the narcissism one. It is not clear why this ancient practice of studying positions and movements of celestial bodies with the conviction that they influence human behavior is going through a revival. They answer this question immediately after. However, previous literature suggests that when societies or individuals are under stress or threat, people are more likely to turn to astrology and other <laughs> epistemically unfounded beliefs. There's, there, there they go with that term again. Uh, previous research for, uh, further shows a relationship between personal life crises and belief in astrology. <sighs> like, yeah, there's no fucking answers right now. When COVID hit, Astrology gave us a literal exact thing that said, yeah, there's going to be a pandemic. By the way, I think it was Andre uh, Barbo, Barbo. I know SJ Anderson and uh, Dan Waits talks about them, uh, talks about him all the time. He was like one of the only astrologers that like full on predicted, hey, there's going to be a pandemic like very end of 2019 going into 2020. Astrology gave an answer for that when there were no other answers besides stay at home you know, get away from other people and that it came from a bat, which also was a complete lie. So yeah, astrology can give answers to things that do not have answers in the world. And there's a lot of things that don't have any answers. Currently, we are surrounded by stressors such as climate change. There we go with that one. So we already kind of understand a little bit of a, uh, an understanding, their, understanding their worldview. And recently, the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, which by the way, like, I mean, do I have to go over all like the Saturn Pluto South Node conjunction the and on an eclipse on the day that the article, I think it was um uh that Chinese newspaper that was like weird, you know, virus circulating in China right now to the Mars Saturn conjunction in Aquarius that was the day of the lockdowns, which makes the topic pertinent. Though embracing astrology might seem innocent, it is nonetheless possible that it facilitates uncritical thinking and favors biases. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this the only thought process that favors biases? What about that whole, you know, eugenics stuff that is like the whole basis of like most modern science anyway and, psycho and psychology? Um, I, I just think it's like, oh, and favors biases as if science is not totally biased or at least science is not like destined to show different biases. And uncritical thinking, I hate this term because the idea – that uh, – because what this is essentially saying is that if you think anything different from what the science mainstream says, you are retarded, and that's not true. Every scientist lacks, <laughs> lacks critical thinking because they automatically assume there's no way the planets affect us, even though the planets and their gravity and their – and everything affects this whole solar system in such great capacity that it changes our climate – I mean, Jupiter's gravity is so strong on Mercury that Mercury's surface is molten. Like the idea that people who believe in astrology think uncritically is absolutely asinine. Further, belief in astrology correlates with belief in multiple other pseudosciences. That's a funny one. This, is, this was the kicker to me, as well as with belief in conspiracy theories. Holy shit. I, has, I have been ostracized from the larger astrology community for being a conspiracy theorist. You go to the places like ISAR to Norwalk, you go to the, all these mainstream astrology outlets, they will disown you for thinking about anything that isn't the mainstream narrative of any subject. I mean, like I got questioned when I was like, yeah, 9-11 was an inside job. Why was there thermite at ground zero? 
Um, how does jet fuel mill steal beams? I love this claim because they clearly don't know astrologers. And don't get me wrong, us here, us here in this group watching this video, we understand what like truths are there and that are going to be labeled conspiracy theories that like, and you know, as time goes on, all these conspiracy theories keep on keep being true. But again, they label this and they weaponize this saying, oh, well, if they believe in, you know, astrology, they also believe in other conspiracy theories, which is like not true. Go to like most astrology enthusiasts and they're going to be like still masked up, um, still telling you that it came from a bat and all that other shit, uh, which indicates that it might not be all that harmless. Oh, it's so, astrology is so harmful. Again, this is kind of the argument of like space racism. And I love, so if you haven't heard this argument, I made a TikTok about this. Guys get all butt hurt when girls judge their birth chart and they call it space racism. These are the same guys, by the way, that will bring up the whole 1350 statistic, which is like the African-Americans make up the 13% of the population, but could commit over 50% of crimes. So that's not racist, but astrology is racist, which I, I, that whole just the same guys that like are legitimately racist, which like whatever will be like, oh my God, astrology, space racism. It's the most pathetic thing ever. And astrology, I don't want to say isn't harmless, but they're not connecting. They're just saying, well, because you believe in astrology, you also believe in other pseudosciences as well as conspiracy theories and all that together might not all be that harmless. Uh, it might actually cause harm. How? Anyway, the present study set out to explore individual differences regarding belief in astrology, although there is no consensus concerning what makes some people more susceptible to pseudoscientific science. There they go with that term. They cannot just say astrology. They have to label it as pseudoscientific beliefs than others. Commonly mentioned factors are personality traits and cognitive biases. Of course, everyone's got a cognitive bias. So let's look at this. Big five, narcissism and intelligence. The most accepted theory regarding individual differences is the five factors of personality traits, also known as big five. Openness, conscientiousness, uh, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. They don't look up, you know, they don't bring up disagreeableness on all this stuff. They don't bring up the other one, but anyway. Openness is usually positively associated with belief in paranormal. That makes sense. As well as apophenia. I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, conscientiousness, I cannot, conscientiousness may be the personality trait with the least connection to the pseudoscientific beliefs. There they go with that, rounding about with stuff. And weak negative correlations have been reported. Extroversion, too, has been shown to be related to belief in the paranormal, uh, whereas agreeableness in earlier studies has correlated with both, with, with correlated both positively and negatively with belief in conspiracy theories. Okay, so they're not talking about astrology. They're talking about conspiracy theories. What the fuck? So there's like conspiracy theories, which is like, for example, you know, there was something that was made in a lab in China that ended up being true. And then there's also, you know, the, the term conspiracy theory literally was invented by the CIA to dismiss any sort of questioning of the government and um, anything, uh, anything nefarious that they're up to. So that is the issue with that term in and of itself. There is nothing wrong with people questioning things. But like, for example, what's the... It, is something that is like, for example, thinking that the that the earth is flat and thinking that there was, you know, something that was made in a, in a lab in China that, you know, caused devastation in the world. How are those two things both labeled conspiracy theories? Those are two, like, it's, it's, so again, it just shows their biases and how they think about people looking at astrology. At last, neuroticism has been found to cor correlate positively with paranormal beliefs. I totally believe that. I think that's funny. Um, though the dimensions of the big five are valuable when studying individual differences, there are additional so-called dark traits. One dark trait in particular seems relevant in relation to belief in astrology, namely narcissism, due to the self-focused perspective that may be at the core of both phenomena. Here we go again with a lack of understanding about what astrology is in and of itself. If you've gotten a consultation with me, how I open up, every consultation is just like your whole life isn't about you, Neither is your birth chart. If you have a parent, they are located in the fourth house. If you have a partner, they are located in the seventh. If you have a boss, they are located in the tenth. If you have a kid, they're located in the fifth. If you have a sibling, they're located in the third. It shows you literally, there's only one part of your chart that actually represents you. Now, that's kind of a, and we talk, I talked to Jen Zard about this on my delineation episode. Um, check that out. I forgot what it's titled, but um, while this chart can represent all of you, a traditional, more ancient uh, perspective of astrology doesn't. 
It shows you and your whole life circumstances and the people that are around that. So it's a, this is a lack of understanding it. Um, however, due to the self-focused perspective that they may be at the core of the phenomena, what, where I would agree with this is their um, sample, like where they get their participants. And it's going to make sense here in just a minute. I, I, hold on to your pants because this is the funniest thing about this article. In addition to personality traits, intelligence is commonly used in studies of individual differences. Particularly, openness has provided to correlate with intelligence measures. Uh, in general, intelligence is thought to be negatively related to the acceptance of pseudo. In general, intelligence is thought to be negatively related to the acceptance of pseudoscience and uh, paranormal beliefs, as well as with apophenia. I should probably click on this and read this, but again, this is just kind of like. I mean, my problem with even in intelligence markers um, is. And this is maybe my bias, and this is me just speaking out the side of my neck here. But people that just go to college and that are labeled as like intelligent, they're just order takers. They're not thinking for themselves in, in any sort of way. Um, I would argue that a lot of the scientists doing this stuff argue that they are intelligent, but they can't even have a mind open enough to see other perspectives. Anyway, that's my own bias on that. Present study. The present study aimed to investigate whether personality traits and intelligence can predict belief in astrology. To the best of our knowledge, no earlier studies have been conducted on narcissism and intelligence regarding belief in astrology. I love that they're looking for something specific, specifically narcissism. It sounds like someone is upset and butthurt because they think everyone who believes in astrology is a narcissist. So they conducted a study that frames it that way. Method. Participants and procedure. Are you guys fucking ready for this one? The number of participants who completed the anonymous questionnaire was 264. Most participants were women, 87%, and the age span of 25 to 34. The questionnaire was created in Qualtrics, and participants were recruited via word of mouth on Facebook. So we're looking for narcissism in belief in astrology, and we're going to Facebook? If you are, this study was taken in 2021, but let's just use 2023. It's the same shit. If you are on Facebook actively doing a, a study, like every person who is a narcissist is going to be on Facebook. Who the fuck is on Facebook that is a sane, normal person? And if you are, a, if you think you're a sane, normal person and you use Facebook every day, I would have you question that a little bit. This is ridiculous that they got this from Facebook. When you think of who is the, who uses fucking Facebook? This is, this to me just blows my fucking mind. 264 people, 87% women. And this is kind of like, like if you go to my statistics on my page, whether it's Instagram or YouTube, it's about 80% of following are women between the ages of 25 and 34. Like that's my biggest group of um, the, uh, people, of followers. But just the idea that this was on Facebook, that is not, and they and let me give credit here. At the very end, they bring up, yeah, like maybe our you know group. Uh, I forgot what the term is. Like you know the the candidates in which did this. Like maybe that was not like the best area to get people in. But this whole study is about saying even the stars think that I am superior. Uh, and it's about saying, oh, if you if you're if you believe in astrology, you're probably also a narcissist too. So it's just kind of like, okay, well, let's look at who they're talking to. They're talking about people on Facebook, like in just any social media in general, active users of social media are also probably going to be a little bit more narcissistic. And, you know, no offense to the women out there, but like women who are constantly on things like Facebook and Instagram and posting pictures of themselves, constantly looking for that outside validation, constantly like you might lean a little bit towards that area. So I just thought this was absolutely ridiculous. Just to say such a big statement that like, oh, if you like narcissism makes you like more likely to believe in astrology, it's like, okay, well, we're asking people on Facebook. I think it doesn't matter what you you put. I think just there's going to be a bigger chunk of people on Facebook that are narcissists. The survey was done in English and was conducted in line with the ethical guidelines provided by the Swedish Ethical Review Authority and with the 1964 Helensky Declaration. Here, are you guys ready for this one? Are you ready for this one? To... Uh, the, uh, this is materials, uh, 2.2.1, the belief in astrology inventory. This was mind-blowing to me. 
To assess belief in astrology, we use the belief in astrology inventory created by Chico and Lorenzo Seva, 2006. We're going to, and I have this article or at least this source pulled up. We're going to pull it up. I want to read this whole thing to you guys. The original 24 item scale is unidimensional and has been found to have a high internal consistency. However, we selected only eight items to form a short scale. So they say, we're going to use this belief in astrology inventory for, you know, to see if people believe in astrology, but we're only going to use a third of it. And let me also state at the very end of this, they also bring this up as like maybe problems with the study. But this whole study is making such a big statement. And you're just going to half-ass the thing that like, in my opinion, a lot of this study rides, if there's a belief in astrology inventory, which let's go ahead and read, let me finish this. The selection was based on non-redundant items. Who's making that call? Um, and content deemed relevant. Who is saying, who's deeming what content relevant here? Since none of these people know anything about astrology. <clears throat> Internal reliability was very high for this shortened scale. At a, uh, a equals 0 0.90, statements were assessed using a five-point Likert scale. One, strongly disagree. Five, strongly agree. We also included an item asking how well the participants thought astrology is supported by scientific research. One equals not at all well supported. Five equals extremely well supported. This was used as a one item variable called scientific support. So let's go ahead and look at this. So this is belief in astrology inventory, development and validation. So I just love that there's like something that's like shows you like, oh, like we have a, a, a system that will show your belief in astrology. Again, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to zoom out again. I know that's probably really annoying. So this is another article that I have to pay to get full access to. I would pay for it, but it's $40 for 24 hour access and I'm not paying $200 just to get this type of fucking info. But I wanna read this to you because this was funny to me. I don't know exactly what the belief in astrology inventory is because this doesn't necessarily say it, but let's, if this is the predication of this inventory, let's read this because this is the abstract. After the paper by Mayo, White, uh, Mayo, White, and um, Eisenet, Eisenk in 1978, a considerable number of papers studied the so-called sun sign effect predicted by astrology. What's that? People born with a sun sign and a positive sign are supposed to be extroverted, and those with the sun and a negative sign are supposed to be introverted. What the fuck is that? So all of a sudden, again, we're going only off of sun signs here, which by the way, didn't really matter for like thousands of years. Sun sign horoscopes were pretty much invented in like the 20th century to sell more newspapers to women. But they ran with it in the, in the 20th century. All the astrologers like, let's, let's talk about sun sign. And they went with it. And somehow... If you're on one, like, depending on what your sense on, you're either introverted or extroverted. There, there's not really, like, anything about that in, in, like, ancient astrology. Who is deciding what is positive or negative? For example, I know a lot of Aquariuses that that's technically a negative sun sign that are very extroverted, that are very outgoing. I know a lot of, and then also, too, like, again, just uh, this whole idea is so so dumb. I know a lot of Leos. I know a lot of Aries that are introverted, that aren't necessarily. And again, now that's my own um, two cents. That's my own, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, that's just from my own perspective. But what a, what a stupid basis. And again, this is, and this is every scientific paper trying to do, debunk astrology is that it's all based off sun signs. And so it's, it's, it's like being like, like the other night I was at a bar with some friends and you know, my, my friend told the bartender who he's friends with was like, Oh, he's an astrologer. And he's like, did you know the Zodiac signs are all off by one sign? I was like, no, they're not like ancient astrologers knew that 5,000 fucking years ago. Like we're dying. No, we're doing it right. And it's like, everything is based off like gotcha, like takes, it's not actually thorough investigation. In these papers, researchers used ad hoc questionnaires with a few questions related to belief, knowledge, experience, or attitude towards astrology. 
However, an appropriate inventory with known psychometric properties has yet to be developed to assess the belief in astrology. In the present paper, the belief in astrology inventory is presented with some psychometric data. The participants were 743 undergrad stu <laughs> undergraduates studying psychology and social sciences at the University of Spain. At a university in Spain. <sighs> Again. I would argue, even in the 70s, a lot of these people aren't going to really even believe in astrology. Psychology, now there's a, I think some people would be a little bit more open-minded to it. And also social sciences, come on. How is social sciences a science, but astrology isn't? I, I don't understand. But anyway, correlation of scores on belief in astrology and extroversion was small, but significant for positive sun sign participants. So they pretty much just said, Correlation of scores on belief in astrology and extroversion was small but significant. So extroversion people, and this is, again, what this study was bringing up, something about, like, if you're more extroverted, you're, you're more likely to believe in astrology, um, for positive sun sign participants. So it's like, okay, so they actually found some sort of evidence here that was, you know, small but significant. This value accounts for negligible common variance. Women had a significantly higher scores on the inventory than men. That is a surprise. So again, um, not really sure exactly what this inventory states, but it doesn't matter because this study didn't actually use the whole fucking inventory. So let's keep going. Let's keep talking about this. So uh, that was the main thing I wanted to go over. The I the IPIP30 personality scale, that's not really important to what I want to discuss because, again, they're just talking about, like, this is the scale of which they were to do anything, but they go over specifically narcissism here. We use the nine items measuring grandiose narcissism in the short dark triad to assess narcissistic traits. Uh, a equals 0 0.72. Uh, SD3 is a widely used scale and has shown good valid validity and reliability. I don't doubt that. Participants answered the items on a Likert scale. One, equals strongly disagree. Five, equals strongly agree. Where higher scores indicated higher levels of grandiose narcissism. Um, again, I don't think, again, you're going to find narcissists on social media, especially Facebook. But again, this whole thing is like, oh, well, let's do belief in astrology. We're going to take a third of what this the scale is supposed to be and make our assumption through that. Okay. Analysis. We performed descriptive analysis using SPSS statistics. Uh, 27 participants missing more than 50% of the scores were excluded from the analysis. Uh, Little's MCAR test showed that uh, values were missing completely at random uh, for the study sample. Missing values were inputted using expectation uh, to maximization. To answer the research aim, we in, uh, which individual's differences predicted belief in astrology, we conducted zero-order correlations as well as multiple regression analysis, all big five traits, and narcissism as well as intelligence, gender, age, and scientific support. Um, which I love that they put that in quotes. We're added as predicate uh, predictors with belief in astrology as the outcome variable. There were no violations of the assumption of normality, linearity. Uh, oh shit, I don't know this word. Homo, homo, sedacity, sedacity, <laughs> or uh, multicollinearity. Mul oh my god, these are some big words. Multicollinearity reported. I I know I botched those words. Interpretation of effect sizes were based on the guidelines. So here's the results. Um, where, maybe it was this I was reading. Results for descriptive statistics, see table one. We con first conducted zero order correlations between all measurable variables, belief in astrology and belief in scientific support correlated clearly. Uh, among the individual personality traits, openness and agreeableness as well as narcissism showed small positive correlations with belief in astrology, while intelligence showed a negative relationship. Yeah, I, my problem is what's constituting as intelligence. Again, it's just the scale thing. Uh, and I love this. Among the individual, individual personality traits, openness and agreeableness as well as narcissism showed small positive correlations with belief in astrology. Just small. Just a little. Just a little. But of course, the paper is going to say, and this what this is essentially stating um, when people are just reading the headlines is again, just like the video. He said, like you are more likely to believe in astrology if you are a narcissist. <clears throat> 
To further establish the study aim, a regression model was tested uh, demographics, gender, and age, intelligence, and personality, big five narcissism, as well as belief in scientific support was entered simultaneously into the model. The model, as shown in Table 2, explains 23% of the variance in belief in astrology. Uh, being female and older shows some small effects on beliefs in astrology. Uh, that also doesn't surprise me. When controlling for all variables, narcissism was the strongest predictor for belief in astrology. Uh, something equals 0 0.29. Openness, conscientiousness, and neuroticism showed no effects, while agreeableness and extroversion showed small effects. Intelligence had a small, significant negative effect even after controlling for all variables. So, do, 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 narcissism 0.29. Agreeableness had 0.19. Um, scientific support had 0.28. Age had 0.18. Um, let's read this discussion now. The present study aim was to investigate how individual differences relate to belief in astrology. The main results showed that the higher the narcissism, perhaps surprisingly, the higher the belief in astrology. The po Again, <laughs> it, it's correlative and it's small. So it, it, it's just like, okay. And it, if my, and here's my, here's my issue with the study is you're talking about randos on Facebook if I were to redo this study, I would tell them email people like, for example, um, Norwak or ISAR or uh, the NCGR or the American Astrological Association or me. I would give out a study <clears throat> and I would ask people who actually believe in astrology, who are active in these spaces, how would they test on this? Now, would you probably see a little bit of narcissism in there? Yeah, but I think intelligence would be one of the bigger ones. Um, I think even, uh, where is it at? I know it says extroversion here, but like introversion would also show, show up here. Um, I think neuroticism would also show up pretty big here. And so when you're asking randos on Facebook, you know, specifically women between 25 and 34, which I don't know a single woman my age on Facebook, um, yeah, that's like, that's what you're going to get. Why not ask people who actually believe in astrology and see how they test? Wouldn't that make more sense to make such a bold statement as to, oh, you know, the higher the narcissism, perhaps certainly the higher belief in astrology. Why not go to what do the people that believe in astrology think? The positive association is possibly due to the self-centered worldview uniting them broad assumption and again and this is the, that very like you have to think about tiers of people who believe in astrology there are people that just read their sun sign horoscope and then they'll say i believe in astrology then there's people like you and me who go way way deeper into that who we would be equals with those people even though they only understand their sun sign they just read the daily horoscope they just read whatever their sun sign thing says and their sun sign thing read any fucking sun sign horoscope it is you're a virgo you're the best you just need to clean it all up and organize. There's no, there's there's no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? I don't want to say like negative specifically, but there's no self-reflection that might show that maybe you're not perfect. So the positive association is possibly due to the self-centered worldview uniting them, which again is not actual astrology. That is sun sign stuff. And that is mostly, and again, you know, forgive me when I say this, but a lot of astrology, sun sign horoscopes that are to the more broader public are absolutely written by women for women for women that just want to say that their you know husband is toxic and that everyone is toxic around them and that they're perfect that's the fucking reality though this must be examined in further research yeah hello let's let's actually do some fucking work here with astrology rather than just again taking women from facebook and being like hey are you a narcissist hey, do you also believe in astrology furthermore cultural aspects of millennials may emphasize uh, the uniqueness of individuals, which might lead to a more egocentric world uh, view of the world. That's funny. I really like that they brought that in because the millennial worldview is interesting. And you're talking to a Zoomer here. Um, <laughs> the, it, it, it really is true. Like millennials are just kind of like a product of the boomers, essentially, and thus relate to narcissistic traits. Traits. I think you would find a lot more narcissism in millennials and boomers than like you would of Gen X or Zoomers. Further, since astrological predictions and horoscopes tend to be positively framed, I would agree, but it's because they're only looking at sun sign horoscopes 
You read, you go through my horoscopes. I'm always like, I don't say I'm always negative, but I'm always like, or especially if you're in a consultation with me, I'm like, hey, the, here's the real deal. Like, here's the negative things that can happen. Read any astrology book before the enlightenment and it's going to be the same way. It's very rare when they're very positive. You have to have like a really awesome placement. This reinforces grandiose feelings and thus might appeal even more to narcissists. And that's exactly like, again, this is my problem with the study is that you're going to people who are pretty much only reading sun sign horoscopes on Facebook. And those are all going to be grandiose feelings. And of course, the people that really like that are going to be attracted to it, are going to read more of it, would probably test higher on narcissism. But this isn't actually like, that's not astrology. That's just like consumer stuff. Um, note that narcissistic traits correlated with the belief that astrology is supported by science. Again, look at your test subjects, look at the people that are in this study. I don't blame them for thinking that it's supported by science because they don't know better. But then the argument about that is I do, genuinely believe astrology is a science and this idea that uh it's not supported by science is pr basically not one single fucking person with a, a brain cell in the science world has ever done any more investigation into astrology besides sun signs are dumb and because of precession the zodiac signs are wrong which also the ancient astrologers knew about precession a long time ago tropical astrology was around a long time ago we knew about this stuff um, and it is scientific. If you go based off the scientific model, uh, do, 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 where were we at? Which leads to a speculation that narcissism may generally be more fact resistant. Oh my God. Like that is definitely a speculation. I'd say a wild assumption, a great reach with this. Don't get me wrong. Narcissists may be generally be more fact resistant would be true. But the idea that it's because they believe in astrology is Absolutely, again, asinine. Like, it's so disrespectful. Other interesting findings was that the higher the level of intelligence, the lower the belief in astrology. I thought that was funny too. And all not that surprising because the people who are going to be categorized as intelligent already have the mindset that the planets could not absolutely affect us at all. It's impossible. And it's these same people. And this is why I'm so passionate about this is I want more people with a with, that can do this type of work to look at astrology for what it is because i think if more people that scored higher on intelligence levels looked into astrology i think they may find some stuff and they might be able to help bring astrology into a perspective that says hey maybe we don't really know what's going on but it, there's definitely something going on here um and that there needs to be more research too but every single scientific study is like here's how you know astrology isn't work uh, doesn't work and if it is like hey we're going to try to prove astrology they're not doing it right. They're not doing, it's like all sun sign stuff. Like one of the only major, uh, you know, astrology papers that was done like somewhat correctly in terms of like looking at it through an actual, an actual astrological perspective was the Mars study. Now, um, if I'm not, if I'm not uh, wrong here, I'm pretty sure there was something done about the Mars study where it couldn't be conducted. But if you're not familiar, it's like pretty much big athletes, um, championship athletes were more likely to have Mars in the first house or Mars in the 10th house, Mars in the ascendant or Mars on the midheaven, Mars angular. Um, and there's some problems with it. I know you can Google it. There's a Wikipedia page for the Mars effect. Um, but it's interesting. That's like one of the only ones. And there's some other ones too, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. Cause it's been a while since I've got, cause I was really into this stuff like a few years ago. Uh, as well as that agreeable people tend to report believing in astrology more. That doesn't surprise me. Seeing how most personality predictors were small in magnitude, this leaves room for many other variables influencing belief in astrology. Yeah, exactly. It's very small. So for them to be like, again, this even the stars think that I am superior. Like, what a fucking title for something that's like negligible almost. Uh, do, 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 seeing how most personality, oh, uh, here we go. Speculatively, additional predictors could be cohort effects, educational levels, and occupations. Yeah. The cohort is Facebook people. Limitations. As with most survey designs, social desirability bias, common method bias, and the use of self-report may be an issue. You think? Another limitation was that we had no control over who participated in the study, thus introducing a potential selection bias. Yeah. In the same vein, we do not know how much participants know about astrology. Bingo. That is the key term right there. We don't know what level they understand astrology. And if you're really deep into it like you and I are, you understand that there's levels to this shit. 
And when you first get into astrology, you read your sun sign and then you learn about your moon and then you kind of what's a rising sign. And then you learn about like retrogrades and then you're looking at, again, like zodiac releasing or infidaria and you get it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. And you understand that there's way deep levels to this stuff. And I would argue a good majority of these people are just reading their sun sign horoscope. It's Facebook. Also, since and it's only 200 like something people out of those 200 people, maybe one person like actually knew what was going on a little bit, but I would argue it's mostly sun sign stuff. Also, since the vast majority were younger women recruited through social media, the sample is not generalizable to a broader population. Bingo. This is why it should have said, maybe if you are a like younger woman on social media, like, and you're kind of a narcissist, you might believe in astrology more. That would make a little bit more sense. But again, what the headline quote unquote for this paper is, oh, if you like test higher for narcissism, you are probably going to believe in astrology. You, you have a more likelihood of believing in astrology, which then people make up in their minds. Oh, if you believe in astrology, you must be a narcissist. So that's ridiculous. But again, like I said, credit where credit's due. At least they bring this up. Another possible concern is the present study is the use of short version, uh, short versions of the scales. Yeah. You're going to do a belief in astrology index and you're going to use a third of that index, especially openness, which showed a low internal consistency and did not show expected effects in the regression model. One indication of this is that openness and intelligence did not correlate significantly with the present study. Lastly, most of the reported effects were acknowledgeable, were acknowledgeable small. Maybe they meant acknowledgeably small, which leaves room for both uh, one uh, type one errors as well as for the influence of other variables outside individual differences. But that's but again, the headline's not going to say that. Conclusion, our aim with the present study was to contribute to an increased understanding of individual differences and in unfounded epistemic beliefs. There's that term again, such as belief in astrology. The results showed, like this is kind of like saying dinosaurs didn't exist and there's no epistemic, you know, research on dinosaurs existing when no one's ever dug in the ground. Like that's how I look at that. The results showed, interestingly, that narcissism was the strongest predictor to belief, of belief in astrology. Even the stars think I'm superior. Boo. Boo. So bad. And this is another thing that you're going to have people who are into the science world. Like, again, um, I had a friend. Um, shout out Alyssa Mullen. She's here. She was at the picnic and shit. Um, she sent me the... Um, this was, uh, they posted a photo of this on what science today and the title or no psychology today. And the title says the surprising link here. Let me actually just do this real quick. Let me see if I can do this. Will it let me? Yeah, here we go. All right. Sorry. Here, here it is. The surprising link between narcissism and belief in astrology, a lack of critical thinking seems to play a role. It's just, it's just, at what point are we going to get people in this world to actually accept that they're like, again, just, it's just so ridiculous. I really wish people would do better. And of course, all this does is confirm their bias of, oh, astrology isn't real. It can't, the, uh, the planet's cannot nearly have an effect on humans' day-to-day -day behavior, even though the planets have an effect on literally everything fucking else. Like, literally everything else. Um, the fact, but no, we're, but again, this is also the whole, like, um, the worldview that human beings are superior animals and because we're, like, we're not as affected by, like, nature as other animals. It's like, okay, there's, like, all these different animals that act differently on full moons, for example, but we would never act differently on a full moon because we're somehow disconnected from nature in some sense, which, I mean, I would argue we are very disconnected from nature, but that's by human intervention and not by design. And so um, I just wanted to make this episode because it's, I, I just thought that was a ridiculous thing. And I saw that article, uh, again, I saw that Instagram reel by that guy that I like. And then you, and this article then gets people like him to then spout out again, like, oh, this is why astrology isn't fun, or this is why astrology is not cool, and this is why astrology, you know, makes you a narcissist, because that's what people are getting out of it. Um, and if you read the full study with any sort of skepticism, you'd be able to be like, okay, like, yeah, you found 
like a slightly tiny bit higher levels of narcissism from women on Facebook. And this whole belief in astrology index, you didn't even do the full fucking thing. So like, how can you sit here and say like you used that? So anyway, I just wanted to make this video because again, I'm super tired of all of the bullshit studies that say astrology isn't real. And again, even in this, um, here, let me actually pull this up because I still have this Instagram thing up. This woman, this woman makes this absolutely crazy statement here. And I commented and I replied to her. She said, I got canceled like two years ago for using astronomy to disprove astrology. I literally love you right now. What? No, you didn't. You can't disprove astrology through astronomy. So I even asked her, I said, do you have a link to this? As an astrologer, I'm highly suspect you were able to disprove anything given 99.9% .9 of astronomers don't have even the most basic under, uh, understanding of astrology's philosophy, but I'm open to hearing it. Um, and just no, you didn't. You did not, for, I could probably see that you got canceled, but you did not use astronomy to disprove astrology. You can't disprove anything. The idea is that you have to prove something. And you can't be like, I, I can't even imagine like what this is. But again, she's probably, I wish that she would have replied and give me something back here because, um, whoa, hold on. I'm reading this next comment. L read this, listen to this comment. Did you use the presence of near earth objects to support your assertions? I've always thought that astrology was totally disproven because near earth objects like asteroids have greater gravitational pull than astrological constellations yet are never considered in astrology. Again, this is, this is the type of shit that we're working with. Constellations, the zodiac signs, don't have any gravity. Duh. And if you understood that it's the planets that operate in those areas make the changes. Like again, everyone's obsessed with zodiac signs and, and not actual planets. And also, yeah, the asteroids are considered in astrology. Hello, there's like a bajillion of them though. And like, so which, so which ones matter? Like, and this is when people ask me, like, do you do asteroids in your, in your birth charts? I go, no, because what's going to matter more? Jupiter, which is like what, 50 times bigger than the earth or the little rock that is like the size of Connecticut flying around between Mars and Jupiter. I'm going to argue Jupiter, but anyway, so all of this is ridiculous. All of it's dumb. Science has yet to disprove astrology. Astrology is real and it is a science and anyone who says otherwise has not actually investigated astrology for what it is. If you were going to take down your enemy, you need to know your enemy better than you know yourself and none of these people do it. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. I love and appreciate you. Let me know what your opinions and comments are below and I'll see you next time.